Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of the out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity. Doing the work as Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has created us to do, so he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites, who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line goes back to you being a so called black, Hispanic, or Native American, one of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. A hey, Shalom. It's your brother Halaki from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah with another video. And this time, this lesson is going to be based upon a video I watched earlier from the Elder Yashawamba. And his video was titled, Service in the Kingdom is Good News. And that's just exactly what it is. So this is just to, uh, uh, to edify and land back off what the Elder said earlier when he made his video. Because at the end of the day, that's what the gospel persists of. This is prophecy, man. And this is what we continue to harp on as the true servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. We not finna we we're not finna water down the most high's doctrine. We're not sugarcoating anything. We're giving it to you how the most high gave it to us. Raw and uncut. This is just the truth of the matter. When you look into the earth, all nations who have been in rulership have had servants serve them. Point blank period. And this last kingdom is no different from, from the fucking most low-level job you can have in the society to one of the fucking highest jobs you can have in the society. You are all serving the elites of Esau, Edom, the so-called white race, point blank, period. And speaking to our people first and foremost, because they're the ones who are most offended at this, and these so-called Christians. At the end of the day, no matter what you do, you are you you are lining the pockets of the elite of Esau Edom in some shape, form, or fashion. When you're paying when you're paying tithes to the Christian church, what do you think that what, what do you think those fucking tithes go to? Yeah, your, your pastor might pocket some of those profits, but guess what? At the end of the day, the majority of it goes to the elite. You fucking athletes. These hundred me, these one hundred million dollar contracts, hundred and fifty million dollar contracts, three hundred and fifty million dollar contracts. Guess what? Your taxes. Guess who they go to? They go to the elite. You peons on a lower level working these nine to fives each and every day. You see. Before you even get your check, they're taking out federal taxes, and they're taking out state taxes to do what? To send it to the elite. Showing that you are nothing but what? You are slaves and servants. They're just taking away these titles from you to make you feel some type of way. To make you feel, you know, as if you're not a slave, as if you're not a servant. But at the end of the day, that's exactly what you are. Slaves and servants. Because when you get your check, the majority of that shit is gone before you even see it. So this whole concept of fucking the masters and the slaves is still in play to this day. But when, when the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans stand upon their feet in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah and say that we're going to have slaves in the kingdom, it's a problem. Because us niggas, and that's how you people see us, us niggas can never have anything. We can never rule over anything. We're just niggas. Shut your fucking mouth and work, nigga. That's how you look at us. That's exactly how you look at us. You see, and we're cool with it. We're cool with it. Because we know and understand, according to the prophecy of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, according to the promises that he made unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, according to the promises that he made unto the 12 tribes of Israel, we are going to rule over you heathen nations in the kingdom of heaven forevermore. Point blank, period. And you can feel how the fuck you want to feel about it. We don't care. We don't care if this offends you Christians. We don't care if this offends two-thirds of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We don't care. Because at the end of the day, all we, were, all we are worried about 
is the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai coming to pass. That's all we care about. You see? If it don't pertain to that, we don't give a fuck about it. Point blank period. But like the elder said, slavery of you heathen nations is a part of the gospel. Because at the end of the day, you had us in slavery. How do you think this kingdom was built up? Do you think this, this kingdom, as you see it today, was built up by itself? It just, all these fucking skyscrapers came out of no way. These roadways. All these things that you see and that you, you, you fucking take pleasure in. You think it just came out of nowhere? No. It was built upon the so-called, the, the, the backs of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Blood, sweat, and tears, man. Working endless hours to get this kingdom to where it is now. Our people did this. Once again, with your who? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Point blank, period. But now through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, we have been let, we have been brought into the, the true understanding, the true vision that the, the vision that what? That the ones who built this kingdom up, we are gonna have you heathen nations. In subjection for you to build our kingdom up, which is the kingdom to come right after this place is destroyed. And that's just the truth of the matter. And what I'm, I'm going to put a few, a few precepts on this, on, uh, on this vision, man. You see? So we're going to start right here in Leviticus chapter 25 because we know and understand, you see, especially us who have the Holy Spirit, that once the Lord Yahweh Shai comes to save us if we be a part of that number, that what? That we're going to be brought into that second covenant. And what does the second covenant entail? It entails us keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God, Yahweh, in perfection. Meaning everything that the Most High has commanded us to keep, we're going to keep it to the utmost. You see? We will not fail in one point of the law, uh, one point of the law once Yahweh Shai comes to save us and bring us into that second covenant. Now, when we read in Leviticus 25, that what? Leviticus 25 and 44. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy, and, uh, uh, of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Do you hear that? And this is the book of Leviticus. You see? Which is a book of the law. And the second covenant it tells us keeping the law to perfection. So that means that we're going to keep this law right here to perfection. This is what you heathen are to us forevermore. You are bondmen and bondmaids unto us forevermore. Ain't no fucking, oh, oh, oh God would never do that. The Most High ordered this. This is how the Most High Yahweh ordained it to be. And this is the spirit that the remnant is returning back unto. Having that ruler, uh, uh, that ruling class mentality. Knowing and understanding that having slaves is not a bad thing. You need someone to build your houses up. To plant your vineyards, to plant your gardens. You see? You need these things. And that's exactly what you heathen had when you had us in slavery. And we, we, we didn't hear no complaints then. How do you think America was built up? Off the backs of so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Because what? You had us in slavery. Who do you think was raising your children, watching your children? Who do you think was picking, picking that damn cotton, building these mansions that you were living on? Who do you think was planting your vineyards and putting the horseshoes on your horses? Who do you think was doing these things? So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans were. Who the fuck you think was chopping out these the sugar cane? And all these other assets that you came to acquire. Who, who, who do you think was doing this? Our people were. Because what? We were slaves here. The same thing is going to happen once we come into our kingdom. Once we come into power, we're going to have you heathen in that same position. You are going to serve us. Build up our gates. Plant our vineyards. Plant our gardens. Harvest our, harvest our gardens. You're going to be our tailors. 
You Moabites are going to be our what? You're going to be giving us pedicures and manicures. You see? Our food is going to be cooked by chefs of you heathen nations. And you're going to cook it to our liking. This is... This ain't nothing new. This is what you heathen nations have been doing ever since you had us in, in, in captivity. Going all, all the way back to the Egyptians. You've been doing this unto us. But now that we're taking, telling you through the Holy Spirit that this is coming upon you, now it's a problem. Now you feel some type of way. Now we're hateful. Now we're bigots. You, you see? Nah. <laughs> We're just following the order. The Most High gave you heathen ample time to rule on the earth and, and beat his children down. He allows you to do this to us. Because this was your time to rule. This is your age to rule. The age of the heathen. From the front of the Assyrians to the Babylonians all the way down to, 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 to the Americans, man. This is your time to rule and to, and to live it up. Because when it was all said and done, the Most High's children was going to come into power and rule forever in the earth. You know what I'm saying? You see? But now that we're speaking on this, you want to have you Christians come forth, oh, this is wrong. This ain't the gospel. Da -da 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 Bullshit. This is, this is all the gospel, man. This is the good news. For who? Us so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans you know what? That we're not going to be in this condition for too much longer. You see? Because <laughs> that's what you heathen thought. You even thought that you were going to have us in this condition forevermore. And that was never the plan of the Most High Yahweh. And we're here to tell you to it, and we're here to tell you this to your face. We are hearing Yahweh's and Bowie's each and every week, standing in boldness, telling you, heathen, that you are going into slavery under us according to what the God of the Bible has said. And we don't flinch. Because this is the truth. Point blank, period. So according to Leviticus 25 and 44 says what? Both thy bondmen and thy bondmen or bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen, which are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Verse 45 says what? Moreover, the stranger, the moreover, the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families. And they are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall be your possession. What does the possession go into? Let's get that word possession real quick. Possession, property. That's what you heathen nations are unto us, man. You are property. You are possession. We are going to own you. Point blank period. Forevermore. Right? It says what? Land, possession by inheritance. And this is what we're coming into. We're coming into our head. Inheritance, man. And it begins with our Lord Yahweh Shai. When you go read Psalms chapter 2, the Most High promised to give Yahweh Shai what? The heathen for an inheritance. And, it, and, and the Most High promised that if we continue to and, and, uh, endure in Yahweh Shai's suffering, we were going to be what? Co-heirs... <laughs> With Yahweh Shai, meaning what? Everything that he inherits, we are going to inherit. And that includes what? You heathen nations. This is the good news. Do you understand what it means to have people working upon you and waiting upon you hand and foot forever? That's what royalty is, man. That's complete rest. What do you think the elite of Esau Edom are doing right now? They're being waited on hand and foot by the heathen nations. Every sector in that society is being taken care of by you fucking peons, man. Whether that be the entertainment industry, the financial industry, you see? The clothing industry. The food industry. Everything that makes society go, guess who's fucking putting in the work? You heathen. And guess who's reaping the benefits? The, the, the fucking elite of Esau Edom. And we're telling you, once our kingdom comes, we are going to be in that position and all of you heathen are going to be serving us. You see? Making our tea. Cooking our food. 
You see, setting our palaces up the way we want them to be set up. All that is coming, man. Because what? You are our possession. By inheritance. All thanks to who? Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. You see? Now, when we go back. Hold on, let me put this down real quick. I'll be right back. Alright, so we're back in it. Leviticus 25 and 45, it says what? Moreover, of the children of strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, buy. When you buy something, that means what? It belongs to you. You see, it says what? And of their families that are with you, which they shall, which they beget in your land, and they shall be your possession. Verse 46. And ye shall take them as an inheritance. For your children after you, meaning what we're gonna pass them down. That's what you do. That's what you do to an inheritance. And it was the same thing that was done to us. You want an example of that? Go watch Django, man. Calvin Candy came into what an inheritance that his father passed down to him. The slaves that his father possessed before he passed away, they were passed down to Calvin Candy and Django. This is why Stephen said, "What your father would be disappointed if you knew you had a if, if he knew he if you if if he knew you had a nigga living in the big house." Signifying what that 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 Stephen was a fucking slave of his father before he passed, and he was passed down to his son once he went back to the spirit world. That's the same thing that's going to happen with you heathen nations in our kingdom. We're going to pass you down from generation unto generation unto generation. Meaning your, your children's 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 children will be slaves to our children's 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 children in the kingdom of heaven. And that's what's coming. That's real life royalty right there, man. And it must be done because the most I promise. The fuck are you talking about? Oh, the most I didn't, prom the most I didn't prophesy about Israel having slaves in the kingdom. Nigga, you out of your mind. You don't understand the gospel then. You see, you don't understand the good truth. You see, let the church say amen. <laughs> you, know what I'm saying? you know what I'm saying? You don't understand what, what, what this Bible is talking about if you, if you really believe that, man. Because the Most High speaks about this all throughout the scriptures. And even the Messiah out of his own mouth tells you that this is coming. Because this is what the Most High promised to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. I'm so fuck. I'm sick of you Christians, man. Who have completely diluted and polluted the true understanding of this Bible. I'm sick of you, man. And I can't wait till the most I starts putting you motherfuckers to death. Because you, your mouths need to be stopped. Point blank period. You, your mouths need to be stopped. You need to be taken off of this earth, man. Because the reason that the earth is... The, 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 the earth and the people in it is so fucking confused. is because of you Christians, man. So going on, it says what? Leviticus 25 and 46. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. Forever. That's what the Lord said. This is in the book of the law. This is what the Most High is speaking through the mouth of our, of our forefather Moses. 
You heathen nations are, are bond men and bond women unto us forever. Meaning what? It never ends. In that first 1,000 years in the kingdom of heaven, that first dominion is going to be with rigor. But after that, we're going to let up. And we're going to allow you to be a part of our kitchen staff. You see, a part of our farm staff, a part of our vineyard staff, a part of our garden staff. We're going to have you as tailors, you see, and cobblers. Those are shoemakers for you who don't know. Cobblers are shoemakers for you who don't know. You see? <laughs> We're going to have you for as chaperones for our children, which they really won't need because they're going to be in perfection. You see, we're not going to have to worry about our children like we're doing this kingdom. They're going to be able to go all throughout the earth for days on end, weeks on end, months on end. And we're not going to give a damn what they're doing because we know they're going to be safe. You see? But all these minuscule tasks that we need done, you heathen are going to do it. You're going to build up the walls of our kingdom. You're going to pave our roads with that fine gold, as it were, transparent glass. You're going to do all these things. You see, all the shit we have to do now, you hear them not going to do it in the kingdom of heaven. You see? And you're going to do it to our liking or it's going to be a problem. Just like it is in your kingdom. So it says what? They shall be your bondmen forever. But over, the, but over your brethren, the children of Israel, you shall not rule one over another with rigor. Point blank period. And that's how it's supposed to be. We're not going to rule over our people with rigor in the kingdom of heaven. You see? So let's move on to the next. But this just shows, man. Having slaves and servants in the kingdom is a part of the gospel. Having people wait upon you hand and foot for any need you may need is a part of royalty, man. True royalty. You see? We're not going to be judging in the earth all day to come home to cook or cook, cook ourselves a 12 piece of wing. It's going to be done for us before we get to, <laughs> before we get to the crib. Because we, the heathen going to be, hey, oh, all right. Halaki is coming home at this time. I know he, 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 didn't, he didn't send me a telepathic message. Let, let me know he coming home at this time and he want a 12 piece lemon pepper when he get here. And I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Whatever it may be. But that's how it's going to be, man. Because that's what that's what royalty is. See, you people have been deceived on what true royalty is, man. The royal never work. The, the royalty wait, are waiting on hand and foot. They show you that in Game of Thrones and all these other ancient movies, man. A perfect scene. When Tyrion walked into that hall in, uh, in fucking uh, Winterfell, he asked the servants to do what? Bring me a pint of fucking beer. Bring me some fucking bacon burnt black. He was talking to who? The servants. That's the same thing that's going to be happening with you heathen in the kingdom. We're going to walk in there. Hey, bring me some fucking lamb bacon. I want it extra crispy. Bring me a fucking uh, uh, a gallon of fucking red wine from the deepest, darkest parts of my cellar, so forth and so on. And I want it here before I sit down. And that's what it's going to be. Or hear, hear, hear the schematics of this new palace I've been envisioning. I want it built with this stone. I want to lay it out this way. I want it angled this way so when the sun shines in and hit these stones that's on this fucking stained glass fucking stone window, I want it to project these colors inside of my palace on this tree that I'm having in the middle of my palace. I want it, I want it all like this. And you heathen going to do it. Here. I want you to dig this. I want you to dig this trench because I want this. I want the water from this spring because I like how it tastes to run directly between my palace, and I want it to run like this so I can have this fresh water each and every morning when I wake up, so I can take a, 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 a I can sip a cup of it before before I head out, and that's what it's gonna be. Here, here's here's the schematic of how I want these curtains to be. How I want these curtains to be brought forth. I want you to have these curtains with fine linen, and I want it to be inlaid with amethyst. And, and gold, so when the sun hit it, it can give off these colors, so forth and so on. And you heathen gonna do it. This is what we're coming into, man. That's true royalty. Having everything tailored and catered to how you want it to be. No questions asked. 
The king said he wanted it like this. This is how we're going to do it. Because if we don't, that's foot in our ass. Let's get this real quick. Isaiah 14. And one, it says what? For Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land according to what? According to the promise that he made unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of doing what? Giving that land that he promised unto Abraham and to his seed after him, what? As a what? As an everlasting possession. You see? Because we are his chosen people. And it says what? And the stranger shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And not, now this is not talking about you actual heathen nations. This is talking about the Gentiles. And we will fall in this category because we were Gentiles before we came into this troop. We are cleaving them to the house of Jacob because we are Israelites. You see? And what are we going to do? Verse 2 says what? And, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the, and the house of Israel shall possess them with... And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And that's what's coming. Meaning what? Us being oppressed right now, having to work these nine to fives. You got brothers that are working 12-hour shifts here under, under, the, under the heathen, man. The, t the time is going to come where the, t the script is going to flip. The table is going to turn. And we are going to have these same ones who are oppressing us in oppression. The same ones who are holding us captives, we're going to hold them captives in the kingdom of heaven. That's the good news. That these people who are ruling over us are going to be put down in subjection under us in our kingdom when the Lord Yahweh Shah comes to save us. That's the good news, man. This is what the Most High has promised us. There's nothing wrong with this. This is what the Bible says. This is what the almighty God of the Bible has told us, man. This is what's written in this book. You see? And this is what's coming. And this is what we truly believe. And this is what we long for as the remnant of the nation of Israel, man. Verse 3 says what? And it shall come to pass in the day that Yahweh shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage, wherein thou was made to serve me in the way. He's going to save us from our captivities. And this is all the most I was promised us all throughout the prophets, man. You see? Promising to, promising to do what? Give us and expect it in. Because he has thoughts of peace toward us and not of evil. It is not the most High's will for us to stay in captivity upon, them, upon our enemies forevermore. That's what the heathen think is going to happen. But that's not the most high's will. The most high's will is to do what? To save us from all, to save the remnant from the land of our captivity, to bring us into that everlasting state of righteousness up under that second covenant by way of our Lord Yahweh Shai. And when we come down out of heaven, we're gonna, it's going to be a hostile takeover of the earth, man, to bring it into an everlasting state of righteousness. And we're going, to go to, we're going to go through the four winds of the earth, putting shackles and chains upon you heathen nations to do what? To fulfill the will of the Most High God, Yahweh, the God of the Bible, man. And that's what's going to take place. And there is nothing wrong with that. You see? It's coming. This is the good news, man. And we're seeking after this as the remnant. You fucking scary ass two-third niggas. You stay your ass over there on the left side of the fence, man. Being afraid to speak against the fucking Edomite. Being afraid to uh, speak against these heathen nations because you want to be joined hand in hand with them. No, this is not the mindset that the remnant is in. We are in the mindset of rulership, man. A ruling class mentality is what you have to have when you come into this truth. We're not trying to be equal to nobody because we are equal to nobody. And the Most High, our Father in heaven has told us this. We're not equal to these fucking heathen. We are above them, man. We are better than them. We are better than them. Ain't no fucking equality when it comes to the Israelites. Nobody matches us. The only reason we find ourselves in this low condition right now as we are in is because of our disobedience, man.
But the Most High has promised to take us out of this and to put us above all nations forevermore. And that's what he tells us in the prophecies or the promises of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. That when he saves us, he's going to put us above all nations forevermore. And that's a part of the blessing, man. These heathen nations are not on our level. We're not all the same because we bleed red. Shut the fuck up with that bullshit, man. You ain't my brother in Christ. I don't want to hear none of that shit. Because what was all that sympathy and compassion and love when you was hanging us from these fucking trees, man? When you had us in slavery, building your fucking railroads, building your mansions, uh, picking your fucking cotton. Where was all that love and sympathy and compassion then when we was out there working and dying of heat strokes out there in that hot ass sun, man? What was all that love then? And now, oh, God wouldn't do this. Oh, God wouldn't. Man, shut the fuck up with that bullshit, man. Don't want to hit into that shit. Now it's our time to rule and everybody want to have a, a fucking moral compass of what God would do or how it should be done. Oh, 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 Christ wouldn't do it. Man, shut the fuck up because the one you inly call Christ is coming to do exactly that, man. He's coming to put you heathen in shackles and chains according to the prophecies of his father, man. You see? Everything that you've done unto us is going to be recompensed unto you. As it tells you in Isaiah, man. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers so they should not... So they should not possess the land or fill the face of the earth with cities. Everything that you've done unto us is going to be brought back unto you. Because what? A. Be not deceived. The Most High is not mockful. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And that's what's coming upon you, heathen nations, man. Without fail. And I hope you watch this video before your little holiday starts, man. So it can fuck up your whole Christmas. <laughs> I hope your whole I hope that you heathen that are watching this video it fucks your whole Christmas up. This is a Christmas gift for your ass. This is something you can you can meditate and man it on during this holiday season. That the, the ones you call so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are gonna rule over you in the kingdom of heaven, and there will be no remorse. The same sympathy that you showed unto us and when you had us in slavery is the same thing we're going to show unto you when we have you in slavery in the kingdom of heaven. And there will be no mercy. Point blank period. Point blank period. Because I ain't got none for you. I ain't got none for you. Let's go on. <laughs> Let's get this in Jeremiah. Hey, call her like you. I'm you. How about Shemi? I was shy. Jeremiah 30. And 16 says what? Therefore, all that devour thee shall be devoured. And who is that talking about? All of you heathen nations, because all of you have partaken in this, man. Every single heathen nation on this earth have pocketed dollars from the oppression, from the rape, robbery, and murder of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you still pocket it to this day. You see? So all of you are going to be devoured once we come into power. Jeremiah 30 and 16. Therefore, all that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And that is what's coming. Beginning with you Edomites, started with the head house of Esau, the Amalekites, these so called Jews, man. You long nosed, gutter rat motherfuckers, man. You see? All of you are going into captivity. And we, and we going to beat the shit out of millions of you, man, in those spiritual bodies. You see? That never get tired, that never get exhausted, that, ne that are never fatigued. We are going to beat the shit out of you, man. And it's going to be pleasurable. Like I be telling the brothers here all the time, I might catch a whole body orgasm just by fucking putting my foot on the neck of you heathens, man. Just like Amaziah was doing when he was tossing y'all ass off that mound for fun, man. Watching you splat on the stones below. That's what's coming. And it's the righteous thing in the sight of the Most High to recompense tribulations to them that trouble us, man. 
This ain't just something I'm saying. This is what's written in prophecy. And the Apostle Paul told you that. What did the Apostle Paul say? It is a righteous thing with the most high. Let me, let me get that real quick. Whew. Call her like him. Love you. How about you? Let's What did the Apostle Paul say about this? 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High God, Yahweh, to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. You see that? So once the Most High give us over into your hands, what we do unto you is going to be a righteous thing in the sight of the Most High God, Yahweh, the God of the creator, the God of the heavens of the earth. You see? The creator of all. You see, existence is here because he exists. It is a righteous thing in his sight for what we're going to do unto you, he, the nations, because of what you've done unto us. This is righteousness, man. And that's what we're preaching. So let's go back. So Jeremiah 30 and 17. Oh, 16. Therefore, all that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey, and that's exactly what's coming, man. So you niggas like Vocab Malone, you see? All you weak-ass two-third Christian Israelites who are trying to deny what the Most High has spoken, hey, man, all you die to death, man, because at the end of the day, you are not going to stop the Most High from coming to pass. And I can't wait to be there once Vocab is reborn into the kingdom of heaven and we can slap, we, we can slap sh shackles and chains upon his neck for 144,000 days. I'm talking about every man of the 144,000 put a chain upon his neck every time he's born into the kingdom and smash his ass on the stones and have him reborn again. If that be the most high's will, if, if, if that's how it happens, or how it happens, we're going to take the pleasure in putting our foot in his ass. Because that's what's coming. We are going to put our foot in the ass of you heathen nations, you see, with a great fervency. <laughs> With a great, with a great fervency, man. You see, all through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah. You see, verse seventeen says, "What? For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds." Meaning, what? All the things that we suffer now up under these curses. You see that you heathen are inflicting on us, man. You heathen have been used as weapons to inflict this pain upon us. But the time is going to come where the tables are going to be flipped. This is what we're letting you know. Yeah, you get us right now, but the time is going to come where we're going to be in rulership. This is why it behooves a lot of you heathen nations to separate yourself from Esau. Because Esau is done for, man. He's done things that he cannot repent from. He's done, he's done things unto the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that he cannot be forgiven from. Be forgiven for. So when that time comes for us to get our hands upon you Edomites, which are you so-called white people, expect no mercy. Man, woman, or child. Oh. It's going to be glorious. It's going it's to taste good. It's going to feel good. It's going to feel good to finally get our hands upon you Edomites and to be do and to do unto you according to the most high's pleasure, according to the most high's vengeance, as it tells you in Ezekiel, starting at verse 12. It's gonna feel fucking glorious. Whoo! Call Allah Yahab Bashmi Awasha. It says what? Let's go on to the next one, man. Let's get Revelation 13. We'll start at verse. Nine, it says what? It's like Revelation 13 and 9. And he. It's like went not too far. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So that's, 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 that's clear and cut and straight to the point. You heathen have led us into captivity, beginning with you Edomites. So guess what? You are going into captivity to serve us. That's the prophecy, man. That's the good news that the promises, the Most High has promised to the Israelites. Ain't nothing wrong with this. This is the truth of the matter. This is what's coming. You led us into captivity, so you're going into captivity. 
And you can deny it all you fucking want to, but at the end of the day, it's going to happen. You can proclaim that the sky is green all you want to, but the truth of the matter is the sky is blue. <laughs> you see? Your unwillingness to believe that the sky is blue, I mean, I mean, your willingness to believe that the sky is green doesn't change the truth of the matter. The sky is blue. And that's the truth of the Most High because he made it that way. You hear the nation are going into slavery because that's what the Most High ordained it to be. And you denying what the truth of the Bible says doesn't stop it from happening. You are going. We are going to put shackles and chains upon your necks, and we're going to do it with great pleasure. I told you, man, I might be state of fucking orgasm of bliss as we're snapping chains upon you, the necks of you, uh, the, uh, you either my men, women, and children. Do you understand? The, just the click of it, just clap upon the, the neck of an Edomite baby. Oh, Lord. As soon as it come out the wounds, cloud around his neck, cloud shackles on his ankles, cloud shackles on his fucking hands, just to bash his ass into the stones. You see, for what you've done unto us, oh my goodness, whoo! It's gonna feel good. It's gonna feel good. It's gonna feel good. And we're not gonna have no pity for you, cause you didn't have no pity for us. You see, but this is what's coming, man. Like the elder Yashawama said, what? Servants in the kingdom of heaven is good news. And I second that point. <laughs> and it's all according to the will of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, man. So with that, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, and Kakwadash. A hey, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, and the sincere peace and salutation. To all you hopefully let I get out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm gonna say Shalom, Wa, Abad, Baba, Shalom.